Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox. This is the introduction to the Big Data Application Set Technologies uh, MOOC, or the X Informatics MOOC, which um, consists of many units. This particular unit is just the overall discussion of what the course is and how it's set up. It is uh, a standalone one available to all, everybody on the web. The essential philosophy of this course is described in this slide, which is stating what is we consider to be the big data ecosystem in one sentence, which is that you use clouds, you run data analytics with your collaborative team, you process big data, and you solve problems in X informatics. X informatics can often be called EX. So um, X business is also E business. And so on. And I shouldn't have said X business, I should have said business informatics is the same as e business. Uh, this uh, class is associated with a, a curriculum of data science. Data science is a very interesting area because there are so many data scientists needed out there. Many people are rushing to put together curriculum in this area. So, This slide here is a pictorial uh, demonstration of X informatics. I basically went to the web and found it, found all the values of X I could see. And you can see there are quite a lot of them, and they all have, some of them even have relatively pretty pictures. Um, even at the top here, we have a dear colleague letter from NSF from May of 2013. That's where the term finance informatics was found. We have wealth informatics up here, earth science informatics, astroinformatics, climate informatics, visual and decision informatics, energy informatics, as well as the much more well established biomedical, biomedical, and health informatics. Here we have sustainability informatics. And the various ones we found are just listed down here on this previous slide. And um, there are some actually like physics, where clearly physics has a huge of informatics, area of informatics attached to it, which will even de describe how that field, as far as I can see, essentially never called physics and informatics, even though it probably ought to be. Now we come to discuss the overall structure of the course. <coughs> So it's designed as an overview course for a data science curriculum, or as a general course of somebody wanting to get a flavor of data science. That's actually how it started. And it consists of two aspects of data science. It does not discuss all of data science, it discusses the applications and the technologies needed to um, basically implement those applications, implement X informatics. The technologies uh, consist of Somewhat of data and analytics, that's the one thing we spend most time on. And also on the infrastructure, you do need some computers, which uh, as we noted, uh, essentially can be thought of as being in clouds. Not everybody uses clouds, but uh, maybe they ought to, or maybe they will. Uh, but um, logically, clouds are the natural place to run these applications. And uh, here we repeat our wonderful rallying cry. Well, I'm not it's wonderful, but it's what we like to say. Use clouds, run data analytics, do it collaboratively, process big data, and you solve problems in your X informatics. We do have some um, discussion of infrastructure, in particular parallel computing and clouds. And we discuss some aspects of data analytics. But this is not a course on data mining, it's not what it's not an official statistics course, although it mentions statistics. And so it just gets you a sort of um, flavor of data analytics. There is software uh, where the uh, student can use software to do things. And we use two languages, Python and Java. The course is arranged in two separate tracks. Uh, this uh, particular track we're doing here is the Python track, which is the first track designed. Uh, there is some difference on the implementation. Python can always be run on your local machine. It can also be run on a cloud. And Java, which um, uh, certainly can be run locally, but is even more natural for a cloud. And for some of the larger Java applications, you might really want to run it on a server side. 
So here's the overall structure. So it's set up as a MOOC, so-called Massive Open Online Course. It has um, over 25 units. I uh, refuse to say exactly how many because this allows me to add units uh, and um, still be least, still keep this particular introduction um, unchanged. A unit is something from 30 to 90 minutes in length, and so it's sort of like a traditional uh, lecture when you set up your course and have lectures uh, two or three times a week. Uh, this uh, each uh, these units, these lectures we call units in a rather um, sort of unambiguous to, to be ambiguous and not uh, as imply anything. So each of these units, which is um, broken up into lessons, and the lessons are from five to 15 minutes in length. This appears to be traditional in MOOCs. And there are some um, uh, material which will explain to you why people get bored after more than that time. The homework and mentoring are separate from the MOOC lessons. And as we say, said, the so there is software. That software will be indicated later on the course, uh, the courses which involve the, the lessons which and, and units which involve uh, software, I mean the software done by the student, uh, indicated in red. And I say we have these two tracks. And we do have so-called what I call side MOOCs, although the, the way this is currently built, they're not particularly identified in any special fashion, but these are, uh, Little um, units which describe particular technologies, how to use uh, Python, how to use Java, how to use clouds, and so on. Um, and um, I call them side moves because those, those particular um, units can be actually used in multiple courses, because they're not particularly specific to this course. We also will give attached to every uh, unit. Lots of useful resources and some homeworks and things like that. Those resources in today's world are largely taken from the web. And currently, there is no book for the course. Uh, this slide here um, lists all the topics we currently have. We have this presentation here, the introduction. After that, uh, we have the motivation, the introduction and motivation available to everybody. You don't even have to uh, register. The motivation is a broad survey of the field, not particularly based on this course. It was a, a seminar I put together uh, for a particular event. And it's called Big Data in the Cloud, Centerpieces of the Future Economy, which is sort of why you're doing this class, because you want to get a great job. And we know there are lots of jobs here and more jobs in some other areas. Um, after the, so the real class starts with the these three units called introduction, what is big data, data analytics, and X informatics. And then after that, we have the side MOOC, which is on Python. This uh, key parts of Python we will need is NumPy, numerical Python, SciPy, scientific Python, and Matplotlib, which is the part of the Python library which does nice plotting. And as we Whenever you have data, you better look at it, because who knows what uh, your silly uh, data analytics did, unless you look at the answer and see if it's sensible. After uh, that, we have our first set of units, or the first value of x, which actually uses Python to do some um, interesting things. Here we have x equals LHC analysis and discovery of the Higgs particle, or equivalently, x, x equals Physics, or this is physics informatics. Uh, this involves uh, the technologies used to do the types of analysis of high energy physics data. And these are called event exploration approaches, histograms, models, and some base statistics uh, of how to, uh, how, how, what errors you have and things like that. After this, after those four units, which are sort of a self-contained set, we have a side MOOC, which is not actually software you have to write. It's software you could use, it's not essential, because I will use it during the lectures. It's called PlotViz, it's downloadable from a web link given. And it's used for displaying points in three dimensions. And we like points in three dimensions because the eye can see things in three dimensions. And you can say, well, most data of importance is not in three dimensions. Well, that's certainly true. However, 
you better look at that data even if it's not in three dimensions. So you use technology called dimension reduction to manipulate that data so it ends up in three dimensions. The only time you don't do that is if the data starts off in two dimensions. After that side MOOC, uh, which is the last side MOOC of this track, we have three units devoted to e-commerce and lifestyle informatics. And uh, that covers things like uh, Amazon, Netflix, and, and um, very well-known websites like that. Some of the core data analytics of that are called recommender systems, uh, collaborative um, filtering, and the k-nearest neighbor algorithm. We also look, as we do several times, at clustering. Clustering is used in many cases. It's not really the probably the most central technology for this problem because I happen, to, but we do discuss it. And we also mention some issues about general heuristic methods. It's important to know that um, in all of this type of uh, data science, you're not trying to get the exact answer because the data is not exact, so there's not a lot of point. And try to make the answer exact from an exact data. You want an answer that's good as the data can give you. Uh, following that uh, discussion of technologies, we go back to a sort of core unit on parallel computing, which is a rather very, very high level discussion of that field. After that, we have three units on cloud computing technology and how it's applied to X informatics. This is by no means a sophisticated and deep and thorough discussion. There is another uh, class in our data science uh, curriculum which does cloud computing in a far better fashion. You should go to that one. Um, after that, we have uh, another value of X, web search and text mining and information retrieval. And again, that technologies, how to, uh, how to identify, how to do highly reliable web, web search. Actually, it doesn't tell you how to do as reliable web search as you'll get today. The web search we get today is so magnificent, it's rather difficult to see how anybody could do it, but they do. And um, after that, we have a set of core technologies. And the core technologies we have a k-means, which is a clustering algorithm, which we now go into detail, give the software, fool around with it a little. Uh, then we have MapReduce, which in this class we do not do. And again, you have to go to that cloud computing class to do it properly. We just discuss it in a very broad fashion. We follow this uh, by discussing how um, how to do um, how to take k-means and use MapReduce to it. We only we do not actually use a real MapReduce in this in this particular lecture, but just a partial MapReduce, which um, we, well, not a partial map reduce, I should say a screwed up map reduce, which illustrates all the features of map reduce, but runs it sequentially, not as map reduce should do, running it in parallel. After that, we do a very simple example of, uh, which is again done much better in the cloud course of PageRank, uh, as a, an example of cloud computing and web search. Finally, we have uh, three units which uh, cover somewhat more briefly than the previous units. Three values of X, health informatics, sensor informatics, and radar informatics devoted to remote sensing. 